Yeah, I mean, that was a little bit of a surprise. We have been on this journey uh, for about a couple of years and certainly not targeting any of the awards and so forth. But what we have found uh, over time that uh, independence does have best practices in many of the areas. We, the journey that we had started in mid-2000s when we actually took a pretty conscious decision to aggregate all of our data resources uh, within a single data warehouse and essentially create a single source of truth. And, and that laid the foundation for a lot of work that we do today. So uh, a lot of our claims data, our um, uh, medication data, uh, laboratory data, uh, wellness data, uh, all comes into this warehouse, financial data, it all comes into this warehouse. And this warehouse serves as a foundation for all analytics that drives um, financial reporting, uh, it could be uh, sales and marketing activities, clinical management, uh, where a lot of this data is used, quality management and so forth. So uh, that allowed us to then try uh, uh, sort of what would be today called big data analytics. And the only reason we were able to do that is because we all we had all of this data appropriately curated in the right form so that we could apply some of these algorithms. But as we started working on it, we started seeing really novel uh, applications, uh, predicting complaints before they became serious enough that a member would pick up the phone and call either us or CMS. That, that was a great use case, and in fact, it has helped our business a lot. Uh, and our members, of course. Uh, you know, trying to predict disease before they become serious, for example, predicting diabetes. Uh, or trying to predict who is likely to be hospitalized. So these are sort of all examples that were sort of almost unthinkable uh, not too long ago. But, uh, but they are all kind of adding value to our business. And I, in time, I expect uh, more and more such applications will come out. Yeah, I wasn't there for that part of the journey at Independence. This happened well before I arrived. I've been at Independence for two and a half years. Uh, so Steve Woodward, my boss, actually was the one who actually drove it. And it was, uh, there was a critical business need. There were a lot of data silos spread across the organization with each one having their own analytics team. And even simple questions such as, you know, what's the uh, sum total of our membership? Uh, it took a long time to get those answers. You can imagine if you had data in different states, in different silos. So out of that frustration, um, in mid-2000, the organization decided that anyone who was dealing with analytics, uh, regardless of which business function they were in, will all come together under a new group called informatics, and they will bring their data asset with them, which will then be put in a standardized format in a new data warehouse. I think that was uh, obviously a politically a very challenging decision, as you can imagine, and requires a lot of alignment across the company, and I'm really you know, very, very glad that independents did that when they did it because it allowed this asset to be built over time as the, the sort of record of truth within independence. And now that has laid the foundation with appropriate data governance for us to do all the new analytics that we are doing to really drive change or um, in a very targeted manner. I think, I think there are many, many examples, but the core of what we do is to manage, help manage uh, the health of our members. And that takes many forms. So for example, everything from helping our members uh, figure out what is the right care setting for them, choosing doctors, which I'm sure you've seen uh, most health insurance companies have some type of a doctor finder. But can we add things that allow you to uh, learn about quality? Uh, of that uh, uh, physician or hospital. Can you try to get the cost information? What would be your payment ahead of time? Uh, so these are some of the basic uh, sort of examples which we put under the bucket of transparency. So that's very important. If you go back a few steps and then start asking yourself what else can you do? A lot of our members, uh, the ones who drive a fair amount of cost, uh, and they have a big need are our chronic members. These are people who are diabetics, who have uh, uh, you know, coronary artery disease, or they may have uh, COPD or other types of asthma, other types of 
diseases that are sort of stay with you for a long time and require active management. So one of the things we've been trying very hard to figure out, can we apply analytics to not only identify who these members are, are they getting optimal care? Are they getting care from the right types of providers? Do they have care gaps? So a diabetic who is supposed to get certain tests, for example, an HbA1c test, um, at least once a year, are they getting that or not? Are people who are taking their chronic medications uh, sort of dropping off and their adherence rate is going down, so they need more reminders? Uh, perhaps their disease has progressed to a point where they are building other or developing other types of comorbidities. So a diabetic may be developing eye or foot complications. Are they getting appropriate care for that? Are they being tested for it? Are they being referred to the right specialist? So we're really reaching a point where health insurance companies are sort of becoming information gatekeepers for a member, and they are the, we are the only ones who have the entire 360 degree view of the member. And that's a lot of data. That's our claims data. That's data that we get from different provider partners. And so you have to apply very, very sophisticated algorithms to try to figure out who needs what. What we are finding though is that when we are able to do that, we are able to reduce hospitalization among our members. We are able to reduce cost uh, while not compromising on quality. We are able to direct members to the right care settings. And I think that's the day-to-day -day battle that we are in, which through many of these interventions together, allows us to deliver better healthcare. And I think that's really where health insurance companies are gonna be able to differentiate themselves. A, a bit on both, certainly driven by business considerations, uh, but IT was a very big partner in that, being able to create that data asset, uh, which of course came from many of the source systems that were run by IT, was crucial. Um, so, and I think continues our current journey uh, in enhancing our active enterprise data warehouse uh, is in very close partnership with IT. Um, and together we are able to then manage all the analytic applications that we are bringing on top of that. Even as we go to big data applications, many of them right now are somewhat experimental. You get individual data extracts, create algorithms, try to find use cases and see if they are effective in a business setting or not. Once they, once they have to be scaled, that would require again very active IT involvement so that these things become real time or near real time and they are productionalized with uh, you know, industrial strengths platform underneath. APIs will play obviously a big role in that. But that's really where we are going. So I think it's a lot of stakeholders working together. Our IT group is definitely evaluating uh, the best a API tools and how to ma make it happen. As you know, healthcare is still lagging behind, say, financial industry. Uh, a lot of our data uh, needs that come that crosses our boundaries. Uh, first of all, we take great care uh, because of privacy and, and other issues. Uh, but it is largely episodic and batch processes, right? Um, essentially data feeds that are you know provided at a certain frequency. Um, where we are heading though will require a lot of real-time integration and getting um, individual values in real time either to drive care at point of care in your doctor's office or be able to provide real time information to a member who may be seeking that information and it'll have to come across from different boundaries. I think APIs will play a huge role in that. We're not there quite yet, but we can see where the world is moving. And with that in mind, our IT team is actually looking at uh, the right tool sets. You know, I think, I think uh, the the key challenge in any organization, and particularly an organization that has been around for 75 years, is how to cross organizational boundaries to demonstrate the value of something that you are trying that is really coming from the left field. This is not the way we do business, right? So it is often taking information from one or two internal siloed uh, organizations or from an external provider uh, and then try to collaborate across to create something of value. Fortunately, I think partnership is in, I, in, uh, is in I, independence's DNA. We routinely, the way we deliver routinely is by collaborating with the provider community to, to do the right thing for the member. So there is active data exchange 
and information exchange about that member. So we are used to being in that ecosystem, but that needs to be taken to another level, to a level where you actually can utilize this information in very sophisticated ways to target key, very, very sort of narrow, uh, narrowly those interventions that are gonna be very personalized in nature. And that's, that's sort of taking where we have been to really quite another level. Yeah, I mean, I do feel that there will be uh, a whole ecosystem of applications that will be created uh, across uh, these data assets, which will have to talk to each other and selectively pass information based on rules um, in near real time. They could be member-facing applications or apps, which could allow members to do the right things, choose the right doctor, find the right place for getting their procedure, getting appointments, um, maybe get the right level of education for managing their disease, reminders for medication, there's a whole host of applications. And quite frankly, extending all of those activities to wellness programs so they can manage health and nutrition concerns that may be relevant for them. Um, similarly, providers need that information as well at point of care. Uh, when you walk into a doctor's offices, uh, office, typically they have no more than seven to eight minutes to see you. There's obviously no expectation that they will know you personally, right? If you can get, IBC today provides using um, technologies that exist today through Navinet, which is a big network for, um, for uh, checking eligibility. So when you run IBC uh, card, uh, through Navinet, not only do you get eligibility information, you also get care gaps that are pulled in real time from our data warehouse. So all of those act type of information exchange will become a lot more ubiquitous. When you get hospitalized, you will be able to get an active uh, uh, information from your primary care physician, and your primary care physician should know that you've been hospitalized so that there can be appropriate care coordination or specialist if you've been seeing one. So all of this doesn't happen very readily today, uh, despite uh, a fair amount of IT enablement. What's lacking is this active communication across the ecosystem in a very patient-centric manner. And I think that's really the journey we are on. I mean, I think, I think what I tell people is that in sort of trying to boil the ocean and have uh, huge pie-in-the-sky type projects, try to choose one or two use cases that have definitive value and ROI and don't require immense coordination across many, many stakeholders, where you can actually show the value and use those nuggets to then scale up and then let the rest of the organization get excited. So we found, for example, as we built big data uh, driven applications to predict who is likely to complain or which member is having uh, issues that we need to get to in a proactive manner, the questions start popping up. Oh, if you can do that, could you predict disease? Could you predict comorbidities? Could you, could you help us figure out what type of intervention is needed by, for that member, medical or otherwise? Can we do something uh, to improve their wellness? So all these questions start coming back when people see one use case, but the key is to drive that use case and show value. If you're unable to do that, then, then really a lot of people will say that this perhaps is not ready for prime time. Yeah. With Apigee, uh, uh, we actually partnered prior to, uh, 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 prior to Apigee, we partnered with a company called Insight Swan that Apigee acquired. And we worked with Insight Swan on the algorithm that I talked about around customer sentiment as well as customer complaints. And uh, essentially we were able to utilize the big data type technologies with Insights One, now Apigee, uh, versus more standardized, standard regression based predictive models. And we were actually able to show that these machine learning slash big data type models were actually a lot more predictive. So that allowed us to continue to kind of remain on our journey in enhancing our predictive modeling capability, both internally as well as in partnering uh, partnership with Apigee. Where we are going, we want to now have several of these use cases, and we want to see if we can use APIs to facilitate communication between stakeholders to have these models run in real time. We still have to look find a use case for that, but 
Uh, I think that's really where the world is moving. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a good point. I mean, to me, I, I feel um, it's not a matter of loving APIs, but finding efficient ways of communication across organizations, which today is just either lacking or extraordinarily difficult to do. APIs promise is that these type of interactions can be much more efficient, can be rules-based, and can be real-time. And that allows us to then create very compelling applications that really don't exist today. So that's enough of a reason, I guess, to love APIs. <laughs>